Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Fairchild in Clearwater County. And we are just admiring the interchange that we built in the previous episode, and apparently the roadway maintenance truck that's streaming through there as quickly as it can. Uh, I wanted to point out something here. I made a couple of changes that you might notice. I fixed some of the roadway markings. They were a little bit off, and it made it appear that there were cars driving into opposing traffic. That's not the case. In fact, these uh, orderly platoons are navigating the roadway just fine. So, wanted to point that out. Today, we have a good one. We are going to finish up Fairchild, and we're going to do quite a few things. We are going to build a consolidated elementary and high school, which is going to be a really fun project. We're going to build a church, we're going to build a city hall, and we are going to fill out the rest of Fairchild. But before we get to that, we've got one thing we need to address, and that is this interchange. It was pointed out that this is pretty bad. Uh, the thing is, these bad interchanges do exist. <laughs> uh, more frequently than I might like to admit they exist. So we are going to turn this into a full interchange. It's going to be a very basic one. We don't need to, to over-engineer this the way that we did in the previous epi uh, episode. And in fact, I think I want to be super basic. So what I'm going to do is let's just grab our highway that we have right here. We're going to mimic the exact thing that we actually, no, 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 no. Let's make this even more rural feeling. We'll grab this two lane country road, pop this up. Well, maybe we'll go eight. We'll see if that clears this well. Doesn't like it. I have to go nine. <laughs> and then we'll bring this down the ground level, go out about 10. We'll do the exact same thing on this side, but th for this side, we'll use our roadway guidelines. And I probably should have sloped that, but since I forgot to, <laughs> we're just gonna we're gonna go through here and use node controller and have that clean it up for us. Our sloping tool and unified UI rather. There we go. Looking good. So what's the point of this? Well, I'll show you in just a second. First of all, we can just send this off into the abyss and even make a connection out here. Why not? Bring some more activity into this area. So that's an outside connection that'll be a thing and then close unified UI and I want to add a ramp so I'll grab a one lane ramp and what we're gonna do here is we'll stretch these out fairly far make sure we have our angles on and really that's about it I like to really be fairly minimal in this and we'll go quite a ways out because I want to be able to slope this really nicely and you see how nice this side is this side is less nice and I'm guessing that's because we haven't respected our topography. We're gonna need to focus on that the rest of the day. Because <laughs> uh, we always should, that's why. Um, and I didn't. The real problem here is I was up nine meters. Not the end of the world, we'll fix this again. We'll use our sloping tool, pop in here. And I think we can do even better. Uh, this, There are some steep cliffs there, uh, that is fine except that we're not carving out of the ground so I don't really want it to appear like we did so I'm just gonna spread this out even further which I think will give us a better appearance for these and sometimes you got to go for that sometimes you got to go for the looks okay so that's looking considerably better but there are still issues and I think node controller is where we fix most of them so let's slope some of these even this I think that the real way that we fix this is to come in here straighten some of these out and then we might need to just pop in to move it and manually move a couple of these down I like to do this sometimes particularly at the node right before the entry into the into the highway I think it can look a lot nicer if you get that almost at highway level and then we'll make sure we've got all our ramps in the right direction that's going to be important for us clean these up clean up our road because that's a thing <laughs> get rid of some of these so when you have that blank you just switch over to bend or middle then you get rid of that and then we'll hop into the MPE look at our lane connectors click on the connector that has all of this going through it control s keep people in their lanes use the right ramp we don't we don't want to use the wrong ramp there we go and then let's clean up a little bit of our side slopes so i'm going to turn our intensity down it's still going to go ham on this <laughs> but but that's okay or maybe it's me going ham on it i'm not sure i'm going to slope 
into this road a little bit. It's that's pretty extreme, at least for what this is. And I love seeing the cars coming from this side as well. It does give the area a bit of life. I am concerned about where those cars are going and I'm gonna have to check that out. But I do wanna do a little bit of lane marking really quickly. Okay, one down. That's looking pretty good. Over here, we'll do the exact same thing. And I can't fully express just how important it is to set up those templates and really nail the shortcuts in this tool. Uh, you know, shortcuts like Control Shift F to be able to 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 make some of these fills. You can just really cruise through these things. If you're interested in this tool, absolutely necessary to get good with some of these some of these tools. Um, because it just really speeds things up for you. So I'm really liking the way that this looks. We could certainly detail this a little bit more if we wanted to, uh, but I think I'm gonna reserve that until after we build a little bit more out here. I'm, I'm just happy to see that traffic appears to be flowing well through here now. It's clearly busy. This is a busy highway. There's a lot going on. And you can tell here that, look at all that traffic just streaming through here. Basically a steady stream. I think we would need some sort of acceleration ramp coming from Fairchild at this point. Although, interestingly, it doesn't seem like now that we've added that other side, there's not a huge desire to enter on that side. Everyone wants to go this way. That's so very curious, very interesting. I don't know why this side is no longer as desirable. In fact, that makes me wonder, is there something wrong with it? I don't I don't think that there is. I think it's just a it's just a preference. It must be considering that a faster route. Well, <laughs> I guess that's the thing. Uh let me do one quick check. Yeah, there are still people coming through. They're just not going very far. I'm I'm very, very confused. So let me add one more connector. You can enter either lane. I don't know if that's gonna help anything. Oh, there is a problem. Right here, you can't enter all the way through. You see, something got messed up here. So let's just come through and get this fixed. Interesting. So that was certainly the problem. You couldn't make your way all the way around the roundabout. So as a result, there would be no reason to choose a path here. What I'm gonna do is, let's just double check. We'll see if anything's changed. That's, that's made a difference. So you see that people are now going into Fairchild, but no one's leaving. And this is also very curious. I don't understand why that would be the case. Oh, there's our car. There's some cars. We're getting some traffic. And are you going to actually proceed through the roundabout? No, you're going to turn in there. Oh my goodness. And they're disappearing. Fascinating. Fascinating. I'm going to let this run for a minute to see if things improve. They just did that loop-de-loo around there. And that could just be a pathfinding thing because that movement should be allowed. Do not know why you would not believe it. Oh, there it is. Well, that ambulance wants to do whatever it wants to do. So <laughs> just uh, hop right on over and, and uh, you know, jump curbs. That's fine. Either way, it's working now. So I am pleased. We have a more dispersed traffic pattern. And what that's ultimately going to mean is that our traffic balances out a bit I hope maybe not maybe it's not even desirable <laughs> because traffic is so heavy right here truthfully we've just upgraded this and induced so much traffic that uh, it's it's kind of crazy anyway let's get started on our build and I'm really excited for the first part and that's the school and I'm going to get rid of that roadway connection here the primary reason for that is with the consolidated school I think we're gonna need a considerably larger building pad just just bluntly and we want to leave room for future expansion we also have this little spot in the corner that is a little bit popped up this is going to be the height of realism as we lower this just to make our day a little bit easier <laughs> there we go uh, nothing's built there anyway so i guess not not terrible not good. Not good. That's <laughs> that is not the most realistic thing that we'll do today. But I'm gonna do it because, by golly, I uh, I want an easier time. <laughs> so so we'll go for it. So okay, 
cleared this site of all trees, which I think is wonderful because we are going to need all the space we can get. We're going to be using a lot of assets by Christo Listo, an absolutely prolific creator in the Steam Workshop, really doing great things for the community. And I want to, I want to thank him for that. And we're going to use a bunch of his assets today. If you are checking him out on the store, he has a link to donate. I'm going to certainly be doing that after this episode. And if you use his, 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 uh, his assets, uh, for all these asset creators, I highly recommend that you consider doing that because they're doing great things. They're really enhancing the fun of the game for us, and I, I appreciate them. So let's go ahead and take a look at his consolidated high school and elementary school set. So you get a few things. So you, uh, this is not part of it, nor is this. What, what it really is is this. We get the consolidated high school. And that's the consolidated HS class 2, the auditorium, athletics field, administration office, class one and the cafeteria and then for the consolidated elementary school classes gym main class two so basically you can take these and you could make a, a, a sprawling campus if you wanted to i'm going to use a couple of assets and i know which ones i'm going to use uh, I've, I've i've built this a few times just to experiment with it because it's a, it's a really fun set to work with so i want to use the admin building, which will be our entryway. We're going to use the auditorium. We're also going to use this athletics building and the cafeteria, which I, I'm going to say we're going to use for both sets of students. And we'll use a classroom. I want to use classroom two because class or classroom one, because classroom two is two stories, which is going to cause problems for us. And I'll explain that in a minute. For the elementary school, we're going to have the classes gym the main building and then more classes so there's a couple of reasons why i'm using all of the elementary school buildings every one of these buildings has a student capacity so you can see that this consolidated classroom right here uh or this this consolidated elementary school classroom building uh, is 250 students the gym is 150 the main building is 200 and right here this other classroom is 180. So all of these buildings have different student capacities and you have to add them all together to figure out the total capacity of your school. In an ideal world, I think you would use these the way that Crystalista would like you to, <laughs> but uh, we're not gonna do that. The reason why we're not gonna do that is if you take a look, these are meant for like Texas and we're not in Texas. We are in the cold Midwest where we sometimes have winters and we sometimes have snow, and if you were to have this outdoor classroom, you would be, uh, you know, you need, need to wear snow pants to get to your locker, which isn't gonna work for us. So what we're gonna do is make this appear like it's one building and it's everything's internal to it. So the way that we're gonna do that, let's start out. We're gonna use a lot of move it. Uh, and I have anarchy on because we're gonna be pulling these buildings into one another to make them look good. So right here, we have our elementary school. That's the main building. And let's just get started building this. So the elementary school main building, that'll be on one side. I'm not overly concerned right now with the existing placement because we're going to move it. But I am very concerned about getting these straight. So holding alt will help me with that. So this classroom building, I'm going to actually insert this inside of the school and what that's going to do is give the appearance that it's the entryway we'll get the student capacity from it and it'll look like the entryway then let's take a look i'm going to hop out of here so i can click it's the high school building it's the elementary school gym and this is a other classroom so let's take this classroom and we'll spin this around first of all it's really helpful to figure out where the roads need to be and you can tell it wants to be this way. So when we look, that's not gonna work for us. In fact, this whole building may not work for us because of what it's asking for. Because I don't think I can just slide this behind, I cannot. It has to be up front. So if I were to spin this around like I want to, it will not work. So we're just gonna eliminate that one. That makes everyone sad. <laughs> and then we have our gymnasium here. And we'll add that right there. And now I think we're on to, we're basically onto all of our high school buildings at this point. So we have our auditorium and I know that this is the front. You can tell that because it's not chirping about uh, 
being upset with me. <laughs> so I think what we'll do, I really want high school hidden and it's very visible right there. So either I want it on the side so it's like very clearly its own thing. And I'll raise this up so that we hide the parapets there because I don't want that to be a thing. So now you get the fine arts building right here. I think we have an opportunity to reuse that classroom potentially. So we have our main building for the high school and I'll rotate that around. I'll use my alt, get this aligned with the road. It looks actually looks really good. And I'm going to pull this in to this building. And the reason why I'm doing this is there's this open air entryway and I can give that a more closed off appearance if I center it on that classroom. So we'll use it in two different ways and then I'll pop this up above that parapet. I'll need to go one more to, to make it look natural with the fine arts building. And this will pull forward just a little bit. That is looking very good. We even pull this. Oh, no, no. We'll need to pull it over this way so that we get this air conditioning unit away from the wall because it looks like it's supposed to have a little bit of separation there. And you can see that there's some things uh, that, that maybe you'd, you'd want to remedy. I'm not overly concerned about that, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, we have a few more buildings. So we have this classroom. I think that this is going to... Yeah, this one's going to want to face the road. So this one is not going to work for us either because there were lockers facing that way. The athletics building, though, is going to work really well for us. So I'm going to turn that this way. And is that going to be able to hide? Oh, it is. So we can hide the elementary school uh, signage by putting this in the right spot. And I'm going to pull this inside of this building. We'll raise it up just a bit. I'm actually not in love with how that's working. So I'm going to pull this off to the side for just a moment. Let's return this to the terrain height and get back to this. So the front of this building is the side or is it? It's the back. Very interesting. That might be problematic for us. We'll have to see. So this is the cafeteria. And what I'm thinking is, so maybe we'll just combine a few of these so I can pull this out a little bit and we'll have some, you know, unique building articulations there. We can have an outdoor seating area. That's completely fine. And let's see if we can now move this. I mean, nothing's really changed. So I don't think I'm going to be in love with this. The other thing I could try is we'll go into Bob. We'll select this building. And I wonder if I could get rid of that sign. So the answer to that is no. So I can't get rid of the sign. So I either do one of two things, accept that the sign's going to be visible or I accept that this just won't be 100% perfect. So the conflict that I'm seeing that is bugging me so much is you either get a bit of oddness here with this kind of atrium looking thing or you get to see the elementary school sign and neither of those make me incredibly happy. But I guess there's a high school sign here too, so maybe I just need to get over it <laughs> and accept a bit of wonkiness. Okay, so I like the way that this has kind of blend itself, although I think we could do even better if we just practice just a little bit, play around a little bit more with it. The other option is to just reorient some of these buildings, and maybe that's an even better idea. Okay, I think this just might be the best that I can get it. There's always going to be something just a little bit off. Actually, that is pretty good. Or maybe I could go even a step further, rotate this whole building around. So this feels a lot like playing Tetris or something. So you just got to keep messing around until you get the right look. And truthfully, I think this might be our best solution yet. Yeah, I like this solution. We can live with this. So we are hiding the high school sign over here. It says elementary school, but it's facing the side. I'm not overly concerned about that. And now we have this consolidated building. 
we're sharing these entryways. It's a little bit off, but yeah, it's easy enough to fix. Things are looking very good. Good enough. Good enough. We're not going to let perfect be the enemy of good because I'm going to keep messing with it. So now the trick is going to be to move this in its permanent location. So I'm going to just select all of these buildings and move them back. So I want to give enough room for a turnaround. So I might just leave those for the time being. We need to have a turnaround and a playground up front for the elementary school. So let's, first of all, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to place that playground so that we don't forget about it. And I think that's too big. We'll go with a small playground. So we've got our small playground here, and then we're going to have our turnaround. So I want to go with something pretty simple. So they'll come in off this side street and turn around. And we could even do some sort of turnaround up here if we really wanted to. I'm not overly concerned. I just want there to be a very clear circulation pattern. Yeah, that is pretty good there. And every school is different. Some schools are going to have a roundabout up front. Some are going to, you know, have very intricate and detailed ways that they're handling this. And then other schools are going to basically rely on the public street. Uh, my kid's school, for instance, there's, you know, it's just you park on the street uh, and you kind of kind of just <laughs> there's a, a bit of a free for all. <laughs> That's quite all right. It's quite all right. Uh, so on the high school side, we're going to do something a little bit different. So I picked up this pedestrian asset and so it's a zonable pedestrian paved road. And I think it's going to work out really well here. So we'll just add this. You can see that already all the buildings are just fine, but we can do better. And the way that we're going to do better is we'll come into here and do our unified UI. We add nodes. So we want to be able to bend things just a little bit. And we'll start out. We're going to move this closer to the intersection, which might seem a little counterintuitive, but I think that we need it. And then we'll line that up nice and tight with that. This as well. And I wanted this extra node. I could certainly go through and remove the lighting on here, but it'll be just as easy for me to take that node and move things that way. And with this, I just added the node and everything is completely perfect. I'm gonna scoot this back a little bit more. I could get into, into lots of fancy ways of fixing this, but the way that I want to approach this is to not get fancy. <laughs> if at all possible. I don't want to have to use ploppable pavement. I just want to make this as simple as possible for myself. So there we go. Our campus is mostly situated. You can get to both schools. They're totally functional. You see that there's lots of activity right here and I absolutely adore it. So we do need some parking and I'm going to do something that I know everyone loves. I'm going to go over to Shorewood and steal my favorite asset. And I guess I have this by the apartment building now, so I could have taken it from over there, but I've decided to go this way. So we're gonna add a couple of lots for short-term drop-off, maybe some teacher parking, leave that right in the front of the school. And then for the rest of this, we'll leave this open. Now we're also gonna need some student parking, but I'm gonna place that after I place the athletic facilities. So this is a high school in the Midwest. It needs to have a high school. Uh, uh, it needs to have a high school football team. Of course it needs to have a high school. You can't have a high school without a high school. <laughs> so we'll place the high school football stadium right there. And I want to add a soccer pitch to this one, an indoor one. So I like this because, uh, you know, a number of schools that I'm aware of have these sorts of things uh, where they're kind of covered year round. And the upshot to that is that if there is poor weather, uh, you're able to actually utilize that facility during graduation. So uh, it's, it's it, you know, it's cold here a lot. <laughs> and I would imagine it's, it's cold here a lot as well in, in Clearwater County. And then I want to add a couple of basketball courts, if at all possible. We're not going to have a ton of space, truthfully. We're already running out. We have less space than I'd like to have. So we'll add that right there. Now, I'd love to get some student parking in here, but I don't see a very good opportunity. So I'm going to do something that is going to probably upset some folks, and that is add it right up here. 
So the students will be required to walk around the school or maybe this side entrance here is another way to get into the school or entering through the cafeteria. But this will be the primary way that people are, or that students are able to, to park their vehicles. Uh, that is a very common thing that, at least where I live, it's really kind of seen as a, a point of pride to get your driver's license when you turn 16. Uh, I was not one of those people. <laughs> I did get it and I was very happy when I got it. Gr growing up in a, in a smaller rural town, uh, very difficult to get around without it, but I just, I walked and I biked and uh, we didn't have transit. That was too, too expensive for the town I was in and really not, it wouldn't have made any sense uh, with the amount of density that was available there, but I still got around, but when I got my license, it certainly was, uh, you know, freedom. <laughs> so, all right, let's go ahead and add some paths through here. So I think it would be beneficial to just have a pedestrian path along the side of the school here. We we'll keep this area open for some landscaping, same thing here. And this is open for the sign, landscaping here. We need a connection into all of our athletic facilities. So we'll just make some, some connections here. I hate that this particular track and field is actually a path. You can download the path for this track all by itself in the store. It's awesome. But that also means it bleeds. So we'll just have to, we'll have to forgive it a little bit. I'm just for visual sake, moving things over just a little bit. And you can tell I've done a couple of things to these assets. First of all, this is supposed to have parking along the side. I have removed that. I don't think that the parking is appropriate in this facility. Uh, because we're really trying to make this part of a high school campus. So I got rid of that. And here I've changed the trees. This is a totally vanilla asset that I have improved. So I, I'm, I'm much happier with it. Here I'm going to see if I can use surface painter. And of course I can't because we have the pedestrian paths. So we are going to need to use our ploppable concrete. And since this is already spilling over, I might as well just pull this closer and get rid of that awkward spot there. So that's looking significantly better. I want to get some fences around here as well. So let's go with something chain link. And I think that this is going to work really well. We could go with something longer, but I like the control I have with this single uh, chain link fence. Now I get it. You know, if you are going to place these by hand, this is probably the way to go. But if you're using prop line tool and you select fence, mode why not just come through here and draw it like this now, it is mad at me inside of here so i need to come through make sure that we have anarchy on within prop line tool and then we can add these otherwise that would disappear the moment i try to place it that would be no good i'm going to send that back here we'll assume that this is a watched location and i think that we're going to primarily care now we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it all the way around. So we'll add fencing here. And now we've got a bit of silliness in the corner here. So we'll need to manually adjust these corners. I guess I could leave it, but that's not something I'm, I'm ever going to be okay with. <laughs> so just adjust it a bit there. And now it feels like it's at least a bit more controlled. Now, the last thing we have to do here is landscaping, and I am excited for it. This is a great school. I do need your help, though. We don't have a, a, a name for this school. Uh, so if you could come up with a name and drop it in the comments, very interested in adding that. And I, I want to invite, if there are any, if there's anyone who is, you know, uh, either into asset creation or um, wants to get into it, and you want to make a logo, one of the great things, before I get into this, I'll, I'll pop into Bob. I can actually select this and the logo in the center of here, the Colts logo, I can actually change that. So if you create a logo, I will absolutely add it in here uh, for the for the school. I don't know that I can change what is at the ends. Oh, I can. So right here, that logo is actually for both the end zones and the center. So uh, very neat. I could actually make it a fence. 
<laughs> whatever the case may be. So if you want to do that, go for it. This is King Leno's Stadium, and I would absolutely add it to the build. It would be a great addition, and I would appreciate it. So let's get some trees added here. And interestingly, it does not want to seem to let me place it inside of this asset. I, oh, oh, oh. So many anarchies, and I'm choosing the wrong one. This is the one. So we're just going to add a couple of, you know, kind of key trees that everyone would recognize and know. And this wall here, it first of all, it says high school, so I want to hide that. And second of all, it's pretty ugly. That's a blank wall without any windows. Not ideal. So I think having a couple of large trees here to block that would be very, very, very rational. Next, we've got a lot of pavement that we don't need. So I'm going to come through here and try to delete some of this. And this is probably a fool's errand. It's, it's always very difficult. But I'm going to go for it. And then we can plop some pavement there to make it look a little bit nicer. Ah, I can't just plop some pavement there. It is invisible. So what I can do is be very gentle. Or I can say that resistance is absolutely impossible. <laughs> this is absolutely impossible. And accept a little bit of imperfection. That's the route I think I'm going to go. I can. It's certainly easy enough to add a bit of pavement here. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Oh boy. Now I'm now I'm catching myself. Okay, I'll leave that. We'll we'll just live with a bit of we'll live with things I don't like because they're not that important. <laughs> I just I just need to accept that sometimes you can't always uh, get it to be exactly the way you'd like it to be. And we'll come through here. We'll add a couple of trees again, no windows here. So I think it's appropriate to, to change that. And I think I'm going to just go through here and landscape this for just a moment. Okay, so I think we're in a pretty good spot here. Lots of landscaping. And there's a reason for that. And we are going to experience that right now. I'm going to turn the day-night cycle on. And you're going to see the issue with high schools. I believe I brought this up in Clearwater, in Ashland. But the main problem here, and oh, let's go into here and see if we can find a better time of day. So when you've got these lights like this, they glare right into these homes. Ideally, I think they'd like a row of trees right here to block that, because if you're looking out your window on game day, not only do you have the noise, but you have all of that light, and that is really, really, really terrible. The land value for this particular dwelling just plummeted, which is really unfortunate for them, but the school is absolutely necessary. But look at this. What a view. I'm really, I'm really impressed, personally. <laughs> so very sorry uh, to all of those folks. Let's get, let's make it light again. All right. So I'm going to take a break from that. And oh, that is not what's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be a Walgreens. Okay, well, we're going to have to put that back quickly. What that tells me is that it wasn't historical. So now it's been made historical. Hopefully that will retain its look and hopefully it has employees. I mean, that's truthfully why this building keeps abandoning is it just doesn't have enough workers. So now that we have some education in this area, hopefully we'll be a little bit better off. So let's fill in this area. I'm going to place our city hall first and then we'll fill in some some of this area so city hall is not going to have the most prime location this is another Cristo listo asset and it is absolutely stunning with all of the trees popping right through it it's <laughs> really a joy to look at but but in reality this is just a great city hall asset it says city hall right there feels good i'm constantly looking for these and this is one of the better ones that I found. So I know that this site was mostly flat, uh, but I probably should have pre-graded this first. I can get away with it though. So I'm going to, let's get it over here. We're gonna keep this, we're gonna look at the economy menu <laughs> and I'm going to grade this out. And we're, let's take a look at the asset real quick. 
So we can see there's a loading bay on this side. Over here, there's a door. I think we're gonna have parking on this side and then a break area. Yeah, so we'll just, let's go ahead and we'll add in a road. We'll do a one U two way up the side. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, fix that in just a minute. Pull that right over here. And I don't know what it just did, <laughs> but I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Interesting, there's something ghosting in right here. It looks like it's all of the windows, which is absolutely bizarre to me, but I'll select it and delete it and that got rid of it. And that made everyone sad. They liked the floating windows. I didn't, <laughs> so we're going to live without it. So I think that's because I didn't have buildings selected in move it kind of a legacy of what I just worked on. So we'll move this right there and I'm gonna slide this back just a scotch, just so it lines up a bit better with our loading docks. There we go. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side because we need a parking facility and we are gonna go very cheap today. We're just gonna keep on with our favorite parking facility and load it right on up on the side of City Hall. And we will have extra parking here, so you might look at this and go, why are you building so much parking? Well, I can tell you this all gets used. Uh, there very well might be a municipal court in here, um, considering there's no courthouse in this community, and uh, anyone coming to get a zoning permit or a building permit or talk of talking about really anything related to city government, they're going to need to come here. So as a result, this lot can get very busy. And then you gotta think about voting day. So voting Tuesday, you're going to need to have lots and lots of parking available. Um, the last thing you wanna do is deprive someone of the right to vote because there is no parking. <laughs> so this is one of those situations where maybe you just gotta bite the bullet on parking at City Hall. And I was able to, to smooth that out a little bit. There's some weird terrain stuff going on here, but for the most part, we're looking good. So now I want to pull this grid through the rest of the community and then clean up some of the mess I left behind. So what I'm going to do is just copy one of these roads. And we're just going to grid it out the rest of the way. So that was a grid that was 480. That's 12 units by 10 units. So we'll, we'll fill that in right now. Okay, and now that we've placed our water pipes, we should be in a pretty good spot here. We're just gonna mimic our zoning. I'm gonna leave this side of the, 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 the bluff here empty. We're gonna end this side of the development, but we are going to continue our downtown development pattern, or actually, I think we're gonna end it there. We'll, 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 we'll have it go out to here, and maybe here, and this is where it stopped. And then I think we'll go residential on both sides as much as that likely makes some of you cringe, and I apologize for that, but it does happen. It, it, it very routinely happens, truthfully, uh, that you will have Main Street type development on these roads. I'm also noticing that we have some weird grid patterns here, so I'm going to just get rid of some of this zoning and fix it. And so what I'm doing is right mouse clicking on the tool after I disable zoning on the side streets. And what that's ultimately allowing me to do is just consolidate some of this zoning. And hopefully we'll get a larger building if I do that. Or at least we leave the potential open. It, it, it's probably not gonna happen, but it, it's, it, it's an option now. It wasn't before. All right, and I can see that there are lots of little abnormalities, but it creates some interesting situations. I don't know that I love this one in particular. So we'll get rid of that one. <laughs> All right, and now we've got a whole bunch of residential to fill in. Now I've done this very purposefully. I wanna be able to buffer the highway with some landscaping and I've also left a path here. We're gonna leave some space in between the residential and the city hall and add a pedestrian facility back to here, across here and of course, everyone needs to get to Walgreens. And these kinds of projects get done because city staff can easily see them. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a joke, K kind of, kind of. Uh, this, you know, th th that's a good lesson, I guess, 
about the way your local government works. It's staffed by people and people, uh, they, they need your input to be able to do things. And if you don't give them the input, uh, they're not gonna, they're not gonna receive it. And as a result, uh, the things that you want to see happen won't happen. So if you give that input, the changes you wanna see very well could happen, especially if you are the squeaky wheel that just keeps going. So we're gonna start on our church site now. And again, we're gonna use this 1U road. I like the way it looks. We're gonna use another Cristo Listo asset. Okay, so I don't want this to just be any church. Uh, we're gonna make this a church that has been founded by the migrants in the community. Let's, uh, actually we're gonna pull this up because the church is gonna be more than just the church. It's going to also kind of act as a community center. And I have not respected the topography. I've made a huge mistake. So we're gonna need to try to fix this. Oh boy, that is gonna be a fun one to fix. <laughs> so let's give it a go. Okay, you might have seen that I was doing a bunch of terrain things. So I want this to really make a lot of sense with the end of the build. But right here, this is important as well. So I want I wanted this all to look very flat. We're going to use our same parking lot assets that we have been using, our quick and dirty lots. And look at that. That looks terrible. So we're going to upgrade that road. Much better. We'll get some lighting in there as well. So this is a, a cleaner look in my, in my opinion. I'm going to center the church on that parking lot so that you know, it, it feels like there's a little bit more balance here. And then I want to add in a nice clean edge to the concrete. So we'll use the eight by one. And what we'll do is we'll just come to the end here. I'll try to make sure that I'm straight. I am. And now we have a nice clean edge. So I wanted to do all of that grading because we are going to keep a portion of this block open and the church is going to sponsor a bit of housing. So this is something that you will sometimes see. Uh, churches are important for a number of reasons, regardless of denomination, regardless of how you feel about church, whether you go there or not, they act as community centers. Uh, so that is one of the reasons why it's so important, at least in this, these small towns, to have these builds because we don't really have any other community centers. We don't have a YMCA, we don't have a Boys and Girls Club, we don't have a city-sponsored community center. The city hall can sometimes be that, but often that's not acceptable as well. They don't have the big rooms besides the council chambers, which is really a room that is supposed to have a bit of an, a, a, I'm not even sure the way to explain it, but it's supposed to feel a bit more grand than a place where you have a potluck potentially. Uh, but that's important. Certain communities, for instance, the Hmong community, when they have a funeral, they need a place that can house hundreds of people for multiple days with a kitchen because they will cook for all of the people that come to the funeral. Um, if you are going to, um, every, every single ethnicity has different needs for spaces that communities might not realize until those communities approach them and say, hey, we don't have this kind of building here, we need it. So a lot of times churches will fill in those gaps because they're only operating during certain hours of the day, during certain days of the week, they'll allow their space to be rented or sometimes let them be used for free. So this particular church is not just a Catholic church. It is going to be uh, founded by the Latin American immigrants that have come here. And the reason that they've come here is to work on some of the farming in the community, but there's not a lot of housing in Ashland, especially affordable housing. And we'll take a look at that at the end and we're gonna need to make a bus to get down there to kind of round this out and finish this out. So Santo Nin Nino, de Atocha Church. Uh, let's see, I probably butchered that. I apologize if I did. If I did, let me know about it in the comments. Make me feel bad, because I do already. <laughs> so we're gonna leave that there. And the other asset I want to grab is right over here. We're gonna grab our beautiful duplexes and turn them into townhomes. And the way that we're gonna do that is just plop them right next to each other in a row. We'll leave a gap for a path to get to the church. And then we're going to send a path right down. We have grid on right now. We're going to turn everything off, send this down, and then we'll meander just a little bit just for some visual interest. There we go. So now they have these backyard spaces. We will define those with a hedgerow. So we'll put this on 
our fence tool. We know we need to go down to, well, not, not point, point one. <laughs> I think that two is going to be perfect. So we'll come through here, add in a hedge, and these will be apartments or, or housing sponsored by the church for the benefit of its congregation. Folks that maybe can't afford a place could, could, could get a place through the church. There's a bit of privacy back there. And then we'll add a couple of trees to benefit these homes. And then over here, I wanna leave this fairly empty. Uh, this could be a place for potlucks, throwing a football around, uh, just kind of enjoying the outdoor space. And then we'll have some flowers in front of this parking lot after we add a small fence. Let's go ahead, we'll add in a park fence. And in front of that park fence, we will have some flowers. And I've really been, been getting into using these new vanilla assets. So I, I hope that you've been okay with that because I just, I love them so much. I feel like they fit everywhere. They kind of cover the spectrum of the types of, of, uh, of trees I'd like to see. Uh, to the point that I, I almost want to go through and just find these. We've got these bushes. And I don't know what these new ones are called, but I think there's an extra symbol in front of the... Maybe it's MP9? I think it's MP9. And I almost wish on this asset that rather than hiding vanilla, I want to show vanilla. Because I think the vanilla are great now. There we go. So we've replaced those trees and added in some of these new ones so that it fits the landscaping. And I think that this is absolutely gorgeous. Let's rename this as well. There we go. And Walgreens has died again. It's killing me. It is killing me. <laughs> We're just going to reset it. You're going to be alive, Walgreens, if it's the last thing I do. Uh, back here, we do have one block. So we'll fill that in with some housing as well. And we do need to come through here with our zoning tool. Get rid of some of this Walgreens zoning. And that will allow us to better zone these areas. And it looks like we're running out of water. So we're going to need to add a water tower here. And what I think we're going to do, I would love to add these steel ones, but they say something. Does this old water tower? I believe it does. We'll just use this right here, this wooden water tower. And I'm going to add that. Why don't we make that a focal point of the community? We can just add that well there needs to be a story and that's that's the problem is i would have loved to integrate this deeper into the community and i did not do that so what i think i'm going to do is just place it here it'll be a historic water tower right off the main drag and we'll get that connected that'll at least hopefully get us over the hump yeah it's we're just just barely although i noticed that we have, we've got some roads over here that we didn't finish our zoning on as well Let's take a look at this and we're going to zone this. We'll space these out like we did before and try not to disrespect the terrain too much. Okay, so that should cover all of it right there. And once that fills in, it's going to be really, it's really going to start feeling like things are happening here. And we need to be able to see that, but we have an opportunity to add a bus route. We're going to do that first. So I'm going to go through and we're going to add a bus stop right in front of the church, assuming that this is where a lot of things would be happening. So we'll add that here and then we're going to go all the way down to Ashland to our existing bus stop, which there are a ton of passengers at. We'll go across the street and we're going to need to take a look at that. And this is interesting. It's hopping on the highway one way and it's going the other way to get back. That's interesting. All right, so that new route, I like that it's already giving it names and colors because of the mods that we have. So Belmont via Ashley, that's the first route. So let's take a look at that route. That is the one with all the problems. 172 people backing up there. We've got our service turned way, way down and it's still broken. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a super bendy bus into the mix. That's gonna be a hundred each. And I need more than one vehicle. So we are going to bring the service up to a hundred. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm looking at the wrong number. 
We'll keep that there. That's still 10 vehicles, which is pretty extreme, so... <laughs> uh, we could probably get away with... I was thinking maybe like 4? <laughs> Certainly not 40, or whatever crazy number that is. So we'll go with 6. We'll see how that goes. And then... We'll look at this. And maybe we can add a couple more stops here. So I'll add one by McDonald's. One by all of the city services. And I'm not sure why this is hopping off Main Street, but I want to keep it on as long as I can. So we'll add one here. And then in the opposite direction, we're going to force it to go the opposite way by adding stops here as well. And it's still not doing it, which tells me that something is still broken on this road. That is going to be the death of me. I don't understand what is going on, but we're going to figure it out because we can't just accept this as a broken, broken mess. So I think it's the lack of nodes. So if I select this and people could switch lanes here, maybe that'll solve all of our problems. It's about the only thing I could think of. The other problem is you kind of get trapped into your selection here. So there is no other node. So if you wanted to be able to switch, you're kind of out of luck. So I'll, I'll add the ability to switch right there and hopefully that improves things. So let's look at our transit route. Yep, that fixed it. So all we had to do is add a bus route to, to figure out what was wrong with all of these movements. <laughs> and now everything is great. That's probably going to help city services here and hopefully uh, help with some growth as well because we've really been struggling with that in this area. So now that we have this, let's pop in one more time and look at our bus routes. And I think that what we need to do is just kind of pop out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually... We need to look at this really quickly. We're going to need a better bus. I can tell that already because we've got 98 people waiting at this stop. No, all the buses are bunched up. Perfect. And yeah, we're just loading people up at these stops. So this is going to be very popular, getting people back and forth to Ashland. And it's going to be really important. You know, this is unrealistically popular, I would say. But that's kind of what happens here. Before we go into letting this just kind of build out a bit, I do want to fix a couple of these oddball things that I left behind. I think that's mo most of them. I am going to hold off on doing anything with the landscaping around these areas. I'm thinking that, that it's probably worthy of a stream. There are a few things that I've wanted to do on a stream. Hopefully my computer won't blow up this time. <laughs> we can really deeply forest these areas, fill them in, make them feel good. But I want to replace all the trees first, and that's not a task I really want to take on right now. Okay, so why don't we just take a moment and let this bad boy fill in. Okay, we've mostly filled in just a couple more houses. And one thing I really love that's going on is that the least desirable lots are developing last. <laughs> Clearly, there's going to be a lot of noise along Main Street. No one's going to want to be, or no one's going to be very excited about living there as a result. So I think that that's pretty reasonable. One thing I, that is not reasonable is that on these big uh, urban roads, we get these crosswalks. Or that that actually look like stop bars and I just I really don't like that We don't have a stop sign there. So there's no reason to have those crossbars So all of that said the reason why I didn't just extend the main street over here is it's just not the same place it's it's a This is a residential street. So it's just it's different contexts uh, I'm also noticing and along these streets right here, we have some zoning that is not uh, occurring in the way that I was hoping. So I'm just going to remove some of this zoning so that if these buildings do redevelop, they redevelop appropriately. And I might even force a bit of this. And maybe it's fine that it wraps around. I just don't like it. <laughs> and wow, look at this parking lot. Everyone is going to church apparently. Or more likely, everyone is going to these shops and parking in the church parking lot, which is pretty unfair to the church. There's not really much I can do about it, though. So we're going to have to deal with that. But the parking is just wild in this area. Cars everywhere, uh, which 
You know, I don't love it, but it's not unrealistic. And I'm going to keep resetting this Walgreens forever. <laughs> it's, it's not going to beat me. It's not going to beat me. All right, so there are a couple of things I want to finish up with. First of all, I realized that I didn't pl plant any trees here at City Hall. Uh, that is never going to happen. The city is going to hold itself to the same standard that they hold developers and maybe even stricter ones. So imagine that you're going to see some, some landscaping here. Uh, some It's going to at least meet the, the city minimums, if not beat it, truthfully. Uh, because it's really difficult for a city to request things of people if they are unwilling to hold themselves to those same standards. So there we go. And there's certainly more that we could do here as well. I think we're going to line this path with some of these trees. We don't need them to be a fence, but we want them to be fairly regular. And then I think we're going to want to hide the city hall from Walgreens. And we're going to want to hide the loading docks from the, or actually it's the homes. So it's not even that big of a deal. We're going to hide, basically we're going to hide all this nastiness on the side of here from the homes. So now if you're here and you look out, you see trees and some windows, not a loading dock. And apparently we're just being plagued by buildings showing up on the side here. It's fine. This one actually leveled up all the way. So apparently they just have the right kind of workers here at Walgreens for which the building spawn points are, are now missing. Unfortunately, here at Walgreens, we just can't seem to retain employees. There is seven workers here out of the 17 needed. That is unfortunate. You know, we've got a lot of population now. It's loading up. I think almost every single lot's developed. Everything's on fire. We're uh, in an okay spot there. We've even filled in these lots over here. Really, this comes down to uh, <laughs> Walgreens, apparently, not being the best place in town to work. So I do want to take a look at the school. Just kind of click around and see how we're doing. Look at these. These are full. We're educating students. That is awesome. And when we take a look at our education, my guess is we didn't get, well, we, did, we got a small public library here. But let's see. We've got plenty of availability. High school availability is actually where we're, we're we have a bit of a shortfall. Obviously, no university just yet, but that's going to come very soon, considering we're going to build our capital in the next one. Uh, but things are looking pretty good here. Let's take a look at our transit. And this is by far the most popular route. We're not passing people up because we've got 40, 44 buses on the route. That is way too many. We'll take that down to maybe like a reasonable eight <laughs> and see if that does the trick. Let's see if our other route that we, we modified is, is doing okay. We've got full buses, so that's not ideal. We'll need to increase Increase the number of buses. Why don't we get this to 12? Over here, now that we've got eight, once these drop off, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, so this is this is helpful. Uh, in terms of the Shorewood Belmont Flyer, this is really a school service. We are not doing well. We need more buses. So I am going to increase the number here to something like 12 because we're going to use our school buses, which carry just 30 uh, students in one trip. So hopefully that'll beef things up. Uh, but let's leave Shorewood. Let's pop back over here. Let's zoom into City Hall, take a moment to smell the roses and have a brief city tour. Okay, and that was a wonderful city tour. It's always great to check back in on our progress and see how things have gone for the day. And now, as night approaches and the sun sets on Fairchild, I feel like we've done some great things here, but it's time to move on. This city has really become one of the prominent features of Clearwater County. If we take a look and we compare its size, this is by far 
well, I'm not going to say it's the, la the second largest. It's close. If not, yeah, I think it might be the second largest. Just after Shorewood. Certainly bigger than Belmont at this point. Uh, let's pop in and take a look. 5,000 population here. 1,700 in Belmont. And Shorewood, 1,671. So, yeah, that's, that's very close. Ashland's more difficult to figure out because we've got all these different neighborhoods with different uh, populations. But truthfully, the population of Ashland isn't all that different. If we're looking here, we've got about 700, 300, so that's 1,000. Ashland Estates, 60. <laughs> oh, so then we got 4,000 in downtown. And then the rest of Ashland, we don't have a district around. So, difficult. Ashland's clearly bigger. Um, but but uh, it's clearly a close number two. So a very, very, very nice city in my opinion. Definitely a place that's, that's worth checking out and living in. So hope that you've enjoyed this. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to move on to our master plan capital city. No April Fools this time. No more heartbreak. No more... No more, uh, no more jokes. We're just going to get to it. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, let's roast some marshmallows over these flames. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>